So now I would like to introduce our presenter, Mitch Moyers from the Utah Division of Services for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. And this training will cover a feature that many hearing aids have but are often ignored or unknown. Many people are not aware they can have this feature included as part of their hearing aid or are not familiar with the technology. This training will cover how a T-coil benefits the hearing aid user and what accessories are available to promote better hearing and access to hearing aid users. Bluetooth may be all the rage, but the T-coil has long been a cheap and reliable technology for many users. And now I will turn over the time to presenter Mitch Moyers. Hello. Um, thank you for the opportunity I have to be here and talk about a wonderful piece of technology that has been here for many years. And, uh, and uh, on the beginning of the slide here, I call it my hearing, hearing aid best friend because technically it, it really is a wonderful tool to use. And for many people, they're not aware of this wonderful piece of technology that is available. So that's what we're going to spend a lot of time talking about uh, Telequail and what it is and what you can do with it. And of course, if you have any questions, because I'm sure there's a million of them, I still have questions myself after years of being a t Telequail user. So. So first of all, before I get into the meat of the, of the presentation, I want to talk about the amount of people with hearing loss in the United States. There is uh, technically, statistically, they, the analysts have come up with a number of about 36 million people who suffer with hearing loss. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, that number is increasing rather rapidly, especially in the years of late with the uh, the wars in foreign countries and m military personnel coming back after being exposed to loud explosions or machinery or noises and so forth or even injuries, uh, they're experiencing hearing loss. Um, another um, condition of hearing loss is the genetics or a, a defect in the womb that maybe pre presented itself at birth and that's becoming a pretty common occurrence. It can be anywhere from a mild hearing loss to a, a profound hearing loss. And if you were to go through your school system these days, uh, you will find that 16% uh, of school age children have a hearing loss. That is estimated there is about one in eight child will have some degree of hearing loss. Uh, many of them don't realize they have a hearing loss or some are mixed diagnosed as maybe uh, a, a learning disability or uh, attention deficit disorder. But a lot of times it boils down to a hearing loss. <coughs> One in five U.S. teens have a hearing loss, and uh, we can thank the iPods for that. That uh, definitely helped increase the number of hearing loss that taking place in the youth today. And one in six baby boom boomers have hearing loss as well, mostly due to uh, aging, uh, just getting older, and the, the bones in the ears are getting harder. Um, the, the little hairs in the cochlea that picked up the signal, uh, they're becoming more brittle and easily damaged by loud noises. Uh, we also have medication. That's another factor, factor in causing hearing loss. Some of the um, uh, myosin category of antibiotics have been known to cause uh, damages to the cochlea, um, the nerve endings within the cochlea. And uh, for most of all, hearing loss is probably the third most common condition in people over 65. Um, a lot of times, they either don't know about it or are willing to admit about it. So that's part of what my job is at the Sanderson Center for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing is we try to reach out to those people and realize that it's uh, very common and we have lots of resources to help with that. So oh, that's what this slide is all about. Hearing loss affects everyone, not just the individuals who have the hearing loss, but it also affects the family members, school members, classmates, coworkers, uh, even strangers, meeting across friends on the street. Uh, it affects everyone. It's not an individual problem. And so if we, the more awareness we can put out there to help people know that there's resources and technology available, I think the better it will be for everyone. So let's jump into a short in introduction about hearing aids. Um, this is kind of an important part of the presentation because without the hearing aid, the telequail is uh, kind of uh, not very helpful. Uh, there are some other re uh, devices available. It doesn't require a hearing aid to be able to use telequail, and we'll discuss that as we go further. But uh, a large number of the hearing aid users will 
be finding that t if they don't know about telequail, they will find that the telequail is a terrific uh, accessory to that hearing aid. And those who do use telequail, um, I'm sure they could testify how, how wonderful that technology is. Something to know about a hearing aid. In a lot of ways, all the hearing aids are very much alike. You have the, you have the uh, sound which goes into the microphone, and right here across the top in this hearing aid, and over here in the little hole on the bottom, this the uh, microphone picks up the, the sound that being spoken or occurring in the environment. That sound goes within the process of the hearing aid. It becomes amplified. Um, and altered according to that person's hearing loss and then comes out of the ear, into the ear, and the little at the end, that's kind of the speaker within your head. And we have different types of hearing aids. Um, some, a lot of people, especially the older generation, they, they feel small is best uh, to hide that hearing aid so you can't see it. Um, technology, there's different types of technology when involved with the hearing aid. But, Two of the most common are analog and digital, in fact, if, if that's not the only kind. <laughs> um, but some feel that maybe digital is the only way to go, or some may find that analog is more suited to their needs. We have different features in the hearing aids. Uh, some hearing aids have the ability to be programmed in many different ways, and some were just used as a straight, pure amplification of sound. And then, of course, the hearing aids have their own setting, which is basically the prescription of your type of hearing loss. Once um, you go in to see your audiologist, they will you know, test your hearing and see whether you have a high frequency loss or a low frequency loss or variation throughout the chart. And uh, those settings are fed into the hearing aid to amplify uh, sounds that may not, be n may not normally be picked up by the ear um, that has the hearing loss in it. And so hopefully those sounds can be amplified and picked up by that person's ear. So this is important to know because this is the telecoil cannot be used without these type of uh, prescription settings. And then we have some uh, different variations of hearing aids. We have the, the body-worn hearing aids. You don't see those as often, but uh, these were pretty much the only type of hearing aid we had about 40 or 50 years ago. Um, I do have a hearing loss myself. I've never been able to wear that, wear that, but I did have an older brother who was much older than I am, and he was he was wearing one of those, and they were very big, bulky hearing aids to wear. And if you're a child on a playground, they're not very easy to walk around with. We also have behind the hearing aid. Uh, this guy right here, this is probably the most common hearing aid that you would see uh, most hearing aid, wear, hearing aid users wearing. Uh, they just pretty much a mold that goes inside your ear. Or they actually, they actually have different types of mold now. Uh, could it be like kind of a circular silicone gel type thing that molds to the canal of the ear. And then you have the little device that sits behind the ear, which uh, processes the sound as, as needed. We also have the in the ear, the ITE, uh, which is something you can see here. Uh, it just kind of fills up the whole canal within the ear, the whole area. And then it has a little shootout, which is the speaker that goes deep inside the ear, which keeps a nice tight fit so we don't have any leakage of noises and then the person can hear everything that's being said and picked up through that microphone. We also have in the canal, a smaller version, doesn't fill up the whole ear and then it does have the, uh, it fits inside the canal and just does the, the job it needs, it needs to do. And then we have completely in the canal which uh, doesn't have quite as good a fit as the other hearing aids but however people who don't have that severe of a hearing loss can are better suited to use that um, to, to gain a little bit of amplification as needed. I'm going to talk about, about the technology within the hearing aids. We have an analog type hearing aid, and this is just your pure uh, amplification of sound. There's uh, no really changes to the sound that's being picked up by the hearing aid and altered. Other other than just the amplification according to how much loss you have in your hearing. There's also a digital programmable. Um, this is still using uh, analog technology as far as sound amplification is involved. But however, setting can be used and they're set digitally, if I say that right, um, to allow the sound to be a little bit louder, a little bit softer, 
Do you uh, switch off or alter in loud setting, loud rooms or um, quiet rooms, or to work with uh, telephones or any other type of equipment? And then we have the full digital, uh, which is kind of much all the rage nowadays. With you can see it with high definition and television and um, MP3 players. These they talk about how everything being all digital and more crisp and more more clear as far as sound is concerned. And that's where uh, the settings here and the sound are processed through a digital uh, processor. So a lot of time there's a, there's a lot of opinion about which hearing aid is best. Um, some swear by the analog hearing aid, feeling, feeling that the sound is more clear and more pure. Others feel that digital is better because they get the sound that they feel like they've been missing over time. Um, if I were to put personal opinion, uh, basically my own analog hearing aids serve me much better than versus the digital, but I've seen people who are the other way around. Digital serves them much better than the analog hearing aid. So there's no right or wrong answer as far as which type of hearing aid is the best hearing aid. It's what fits that person, that individual who wears the hearing aid. And so it's best for them to be able to try and find which is best suited for their loss. And then we also have cochlear implants. Uh, it pretty much kind of the same setup or look of a hearing aid, especially the behind the ear hearing aid. And you do have the coil that goes against the processor within, that's within, within the cochlear of the person's head. And then you have the processing unit that picks up the signal through the microphone or the telecoil as the case may be. And that uh, picked up and the sound is converted and amplified as needed for that person type of loss. And you also have a controller unit, which could be a handheld or a belt-worn type controller. And it has to come with a belt pack, a battery pack, excuse me. And um, it can be controlled whatever the person needs in whatever setting they may be in. They also have dual microphones, which is, and digital hearing aids also have that as well. Um, it allows to pick up what noise is required or desired by that person and kind of cut down on any um, environmental noises or white noise that may not be needed. And of course you have the ear hook to make sure it stays on your head. And then on, uh, any, other, any other components that the person may need to help make sure that sound is picked up to their needs. And uh, here's just a list of all the different types of features that can be found in, within a hearing aid. Most commonly and most importantly probably is your your volume control, you, know, you need something to make it louder or softer. The telecoil, which is what we'll be talking about. The multiple microphone for different directions of sound. We also have the compression of sound, be able to allow the, uh, the pure sound that's needed for that person. We have clipping to make sure it stays in place. We all have direct audio input, and we won't talk a lot about that in this presentation, but we'll talk about some of the audio input that can work with the telecoil but basically allows you to connect to other sound, sound resources, whether it's the telephone, radios, and so forth. Uh, some hearing aids do have an FM radio signal within to help pick up any transmission of sound, ability to be programmed, ability to enhance speech or reduce noise, the ability to go across the frequencies to allow higher, noise, higher noises to be heard or lower tones to be heard ear molds and venting to make sure that the, ears and the hearing aid stays in your ear but it doesn't um, choke your ear. <laughs> and then a, a remote control to help to uh, use the hearing aid to their satisfaction. But of course, as I mentioned earlier today, we're going to talk about the telecoil. And that's uh, the, the, the be hearing aid best friend, basically. And we felt that this would be an important part of presenting because I've come across many consumers that have asked me what's the best way for me to use my hearing aid and, I've oft, and I often ask them, do you uh, use your telecoil? And I would say maybe three out of ten times I'll get someone saying, what? I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I didn't even know I had that feature in my hearing aid. So that's what we're here today for. Excuse me a second, I have a little issue. No issue. Uh, telecoil, a T-coil for short. Uh, it's basically a small copper, copper coil that is a, an option in most hearing aids. Um, it can be built into your cochlear implant processor as well. We also have the 
um, the magnetic signal that is transmitted from a, a sound source and that telecoil it, is what picks up that magnetic signal. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. The signal is then processed by the hearing aid or the implant and passed on to the auditory, auditory nerve as, as the sound. Um, that sound is already corrected and fitted to that person's hearing needs. So if I am, um, for myself for example, I do have a high freq frequency loss as well as some mid-tones. And so my, the hearing aid or the telecoil would work because my hearing aid is doing all the work. So that's important to know because uh, the telecoil doesn't actually alter the sound, it just allows the sound to be tran uh, transported and used by the hearing aid. This is uh, some graphics to show you what the telecoil looks like. As you can see, there's different sizes or different lengths of telecoil use. And it's basically just a small copper wire, as I mentioned before. And if you can see the little dime or the penny here, in comparison to the size, it's a rather small piece of technology with these long little wires that loop around the kind of a spool here. And within the behind the ear hearing aid, this little uh, the letter D with the circle around it, that's how it fits within the hearing aid. And so a lot of times that's important to know because users of telephones uh, would need to place the telephone right on top of that coil to be able to pick up that, that sound or even headphone users if they're using the telecoil. How do you turn on the telecoil? Uh, that's a very good question to have. Hearing aid then cochlear implant wearer must either turn on or switch on the that feature. In the older models, uh, like my hearing aid for example, it's just a little switch, kind of like a light switch you see in the wall, and you just flick it over to the on position or to the T position. Some of the hearing aids have like an M or a T or an O. The M would be the microphone, which is the most commonly used. The T is the telecoil and O for off. Um, some of the newer hearing aids, or the digital hearing aids, as well as the implants, also have a change program mode which is done by just pressing a button on the, uh, the ear level device on a remote control or using a remote control. Uh, that allows the hearing aid to switch over to the telecoil as needed. Um, a lot of users prefer um, that the hearing aid, when switched to a telecoil, that is the only, tele the only sound that is being picked up. Or some may be able to switch on both the microphone and the telecoil. The difference between the two is that Using telecoil only will cut out all the environmental sounds, so you would only hear anything that's being picked up by electromagnetic signal and through that telecoil. Using the combination of both, you get the pickup of the signal as well as the microphone. Um, it, vary, it varies on per individual of which is they prefer the most. Automatic telecoils have become pretty have become more available on the uh, newer hearing aids and cochlear implants recently, where uh, the telecoil senses the an electromagnetic signal and automatically switches back on and allows the uh, user to be able to hear through that telecoil use. And uh, so some of those were actually uh, be turned on by uh, excuse me, a neck loop or a room loop. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little more about that in a minute here. And they may be uh, intermittent as far as the recognition is concerned. Um, the, it wouldn't be able to be switched on unless that signal is there. So be, if you are uh, somebody who is interested in using a telecoil or you're unsure of whether your hearing aid has one, uh, get in touch with your hearing aid vendor or the, the hearing aid manufacturer and ask them, does my hearing aid have a telecoil? Or look at your hearing aid, see if you have that switch there to help you turn it on and use it. How did the telecoil work? As I mentioned before, it picks up an electromagnetic magnetic signal. Um, that signal is created from a hearing aid compatible telephones, and you, you probably see that term quite often. Um, cell phones are hearing aid compa compatible, or this, uh, this headphone is hearing aid compatible, and so forth. Um, this is important to know, because sometimes the, the speaker may be manufactured in the such that it doesn't use any electromagnetic uh, type of resources to be able to amplify sound. Uh, a lot of these standard headphones already have them within 
the uh, device, so you don't have to uh, worry about looking for that signal. But some I mean, of the telephones now, they, they created speakers that have no uh, copper wiring or features within it. So it may be important to know that uh, you need to have, what is the technical term, an induction signal within the, the device. Most commonly used is the telephone when uh, turning on your telecoil. Um, when, when you use the telephone against your hearing aid using only a microphone, you'll start to get a feedback or a squealing. Uh, this is usually done by the uh, sound is always being leaked out of the, hear, out of the ear by itself. So once, that sound, once you create a, a cove or um, a covering over that microphone, you're actually picking up that sound that's being leaked through the hearing aid and through the microphone and creating a, a loop and that sound becomes louder and louder. It's the same idea of having your cell phone and your, your landline phone both called into each other and you put them and they start getting louder and louder. Um, so when the manufacturers way back when tried to figure a, a better way to make it so a person can hear on the telephone without having to have that squeal by putting the hearing aid, I mean the phone near the hearing aid. And so the telephone, well, they put that little wiring within the phone which emit the magnetic signal from the earpiece and when it's placed correctly to the, the hearing aid with the telecoil, the sound should be transmitted clearly and perfectly if not. Uh, this is really nice because the telecoil will basically eliminate any feedback by muting the microphone or turning it off and uh, it just amplifies the sound coming from that telephone based on the prescription as we mentioned before in the hearing aid. And, and that's important to know because uh, with behind the hear, ear type hearing, hearing aids, uh, the placement of that telephone is important. So you may have seen where it, the person is placing the phone above their ear and wondering how, that, how they can hear. Well, they're trying to get that connection to that telecoil. And it's uh, a lot of time when, when working with the consumers who receive, especially baby boomers, when they get their hearing aid for the first time and they're trying to use the telephone, if they have that behind the ear placement right here, like this, where you put, you put the phone on top of the hearing aid itself so you can get the telecoil, they'll put it over like they used to, which is over the ear. So you kind of break up that connection to the hearing aid and they won't be able to hear it. Or it sound quieter because they're not as strong of a signal. Uh, again, we got a lot of questions of, of, uh, about the compatibility of hearing aids, or uh, excuse me, compatibility of the cell phone working with hearing aids and you probably see the ratings called uh, you know M3, M4, M3, T3 uh, and so forth. Of course the M's are referring to the microphone. Uh, it's based on the FCC uh, rating allowance of what possible ratings are allowed to make it a considered to be considered a hearing aid compatible phone. So uh, of course the the numbers go from worst to best. So if you get a four, it, it means it did very well in testings. If you did three, it did close to very well, if not, if not great. And then of course, you know, one and two is probably something you want to avoid because you're, you're not going to have a very good experience in using the, tel the, um, the hearing aid phone. So when you're looking for a phone, you're probably, if you're a hearing aid user and you use the telecoil, um, or a microphone, if, if the case may be. You may want to look for the phone that has an M3 or a T3 or above uh, to make it a better experience. Uh, the graphics here that shows you different types of telephone that may have a hearing aid compatibility. Some other telecoil uses. Um, a lot of assistive listening systems. And I uh, put the thumb here on the table for kind of a quick look. Just uh, some have a microphone built in, some have jacks within, uh, some just have different size jacks or a microphone both together. This allows a person who may or may not have a hearing aid to be able to pick up sound louder and more clearly. Um, or if they are a hearing aid user, they can connect in uh, audio loops like the, uh, the graphics we see here. And I brought a few just for show and tell. If you look on the uh, top right, this is your basic uh, loop neck loop. It just fits over the, the person's shoulder and neck and plugs into either a telephone or an assistive listening device. Um, below that is the pocket talker. 
Um, I'll give you a little close-up view of that. And if you can see the our logo on the it's just kind of the device that shows uh, the processing unit itself. And we have a microphone that's plugged into it directly. And this uh, person can walk around and hold the, uh, the microphone up to someone's mouth and they can speak into that. This is very uh, popular for people who have a hard time listening into the, in cars, especially if one person has a hearing loss. So you got to hope to keep your eyes on the road so you don't want to be looking at the passenger and they're trying to read lips or understand what they're saying. So they could uh, grab one of those devices, put on a headphone or a neck loop. Um, neck loop is light, nice because as I mentioned before, you can cut off the microphone and pick up only what is being heard through that little uh, pocket talker. It also, where you can take out the microphone, I'll pop it out here, and it has uh, two ports on the top there, and these are the 3.5 millimeter jacks, so on this side here is your audio input, that's where it picks up the sound to the microphone, or you can plug it into your telephone, cell phone, or uh, um, a PA system, or an iPod. Then you can plug in your neck loop here, or your... Uh, your headphone and that can go out to either your neck or behind the ear and you can switch on your hearing aid telequel to hear and uh, make it sound better for you and then of course the processor has its own volume control and tone control as well and another another example is of telequel use I've talked a lot about the uh, the neck loops here we have the silhouette devices and if you look at them closely, you can see how they kind of have the shape of the hearing aid itself. Uh, this works the same way. There's the, the copper wiring with inside of that. When it's connected to the, uh, the pocket talker or any other sound resource, the, the become charged and uh, sound is transmitted electromagnetically. And then the hearing aid, when switched to a telecoil, can pick up that signal. Um, that's very nice to have. It, Especially if you don't want to, if the headphones itself don't work and causes problems, especially with behind the he ear hearing aids, they don't fit very well. Um, these can work just as well without the need of the big bulky hearing aids and uh, just pop the hearing aid or the implant onto a telecoil switch and then you're, you're listening to sound as it transmitted through that. Uh, in some cases, I think I would say the sound is a lot clearer or purer uh, versus using a headphone if you're wearing a hearing aid. Some other examples, we have a, a single, it's called a hook, it's, a, it's another uh, telecoil type device, you got the copper wiring within the hook itself, uh, and this is also works with the cell phone, so you have the, the mute control or the volume control that you can turn on or off from the device itself, or you could use the phone for the tone control, it works either way. This one has a a 2.5 millimeter jack and then you know, some telephones have the 2.5 audio in input jack so you might want to be aware of that when you're picking out which uh, telecoil device you want to wear. There's also another another type of hook this one has two of them if, a if you're a dual hearing aid user you can connect, connect these to both hearing aids with the telecoil and again, you have the same microphone and switch here for, a te for a telephone use. And uh, introduce this one, because if you see the one on the slide, we have one, the different colors here. This is actually, switch into the other camera, this is actually the Bluetooth telecoil. And so if you don't want to connect a a plug directly into your cell phone or if you don't want to connect it to your iPod or whatever sound source you can connect it through your Bluetooth and you program this little unit right here uh, that will connect to your Bluetooth transmitter within your cell phone or whatever device and then once the light is it, once it lit up and you have a connection the sound would then be processed through the the telecoil hooks there and then of course you switch your hearing aid to telecoil or if you have the type that uh, automatically switches on for you, you can get a nice clear sound of using, of hearing whatever is coming across the Bluetooth signal. 
This is also very nice because you don't you know, you can put your phone on the table and you can still walk around you talking on the telephone because uh, the uh, little box here acts also acts as a microphone. And you can also change volume and so forth. So you would have the same range of what the Bluetooth is. I believe it's about 30 feet. Um, so I know some like to walk around in their office while they're on the telephone. So this should be a great tool to use. You can leave your cell phone down and walk around. <coughs> and we also have the uh, little personal listening system. There's one here that I brought. This one's got the 2.5 millimeter jack. Um, you can plug in your neck loop. And this would actually have the microphone built in it, or you can uh, you can uh, see the input. Oh yeah, the input into your cell phone or music player. And you can control the volume here to hear up or down, make it louder or softer. And you can use uh, you have the telecoil switch itself, which activates the telecoil use, or you can just use the microphone. Um, so you can use this as your hearing aid if you want to use the headphones. You don't have to have the, an actual hearing aid itself. But if you do have a hearing aid and you want to be able to use this as a microphone in addition to what your hearing aid can do or connect it to a cell phone, you can pop it onto Telequail and uh, put in something like these little silhouettes here or the neck loop. Um, these are two very good compatible devices that have helped you to hear sounds a little more clearly. clearly. And moving on, uh, some other uses of the, of the loops, and I put a, some pictures here to what you can use it with, and you can see it pretty much everything. You have uh, television, iPod, cell phone, microphone, you can even connect it to your computer, your stereo system, your home intercom system. Um, it works with just about anything. Um, we're, you can also go to a lot of public venues and they will they will start to have some features where you can use that loop. I'll talk a little bit, little bit more about a movement that's taken place to create more access to people with hearing loss in the future slides. And that's where we're going to go into here. I spent a lot of time talking about um, hearing aid neck loops or the silhouettes. This is all kind of a personal use, so if you're wearing the hearing aid, you wear that, you're wearing these devices on your body. However, if you wanted to go to, say, a movie or go to an, a meeting or an event, um, there's also another type of uh, feature to the telecoil that can be used, and that's whether you got hearing loops. Um, they were basically, where you have a room that looped out, in this picture here, you can see across the top here, this little green light, or green lines. These are actually the magnetic signal. And here's another one that comes through here on the, across the bottom on the floor. And right here is the little amplification processor. So basically, you have whatever event that's taking place. Let's say you have a, uh, a meeting. Uh, you have the speaker that's sitting here and speaking, we have a connection to this little box and the sound is being transmitted through these wires. So all the person has to do is walk into the room, flick on that telecoil on the hearing aid, and then boom, that hearing aid is going to pick up everything that's coming through these antennas that's looped around the room. Um, these are very nice. Uh, for allowed people to hear not only uh, the speaker itself, from a distance, so if, you, if you're the type of person that needed to sit up front all the time to be able to hear the speaker, uh, using these loop system, it'll, it doesn't matter where you sit in that room, it'll sound like you're standing, sitting right next to that person and just as clearly as you were sitting in the back. It also helps to reduce the poor acoustic features of a room. Let's so say you have lots of bare walls and uh, bare floors, then you have that sound echoing. Uh, this will help reduce reduce the, the struggle that comes within trying to hear within those rooms. Here's an example, another example of a hearing loop. 
uh, we have a picture, uh, picture of a church where you can see the speaker up here with number one. He's speaking into the microphone. That wire goes down and connects to the amplifier. And then, of course, the amplifier picks it up, amplifies the sound, and sends it through the loop. And you can see he's running across the, around the side edge of the room, with kind of a black wire. And it's really nice because uh, a lot of times you can just stick it under the carpet so no one can actually see these, these uh, loops that are going around the room. It's, it's hidden. Um, all you have to do is just let the person know that this, this room is looped. They can just connect to hearing. So in this case, when you're sitting down, they can, they're close to this wiring. So they click on the hearing aid to telequel, and they're hearing everything that's being said through this microphone. And of course, if there are other microphones within the room, uh, they can pick that up as well. So what if you don't have a telecoil? Um, what if you don't have a hearing aid that has a telecoil? Um, of course, you know, with, with the ADA, we're supposed to provide all complementary loop sy listening system that the, at the events that have these devices. So if you don't have a hearing aid that doesn't have a telecoil, there's also devices that, uh, that would work in its place. As you can see here on the, on the bottom left side, we have uh, the, this is the old looping system, but then you have all these headphones. All of these have a telecoil copper wiring built within. So if the room is looped, that, those headphones will pick up all the, the uh, sound within the room. We also have uh, <coughs> other devices that you just wear around your neck, and this, this itself will actually pick up the telecoil signal. And you can't see it very well in the picture, but there's actually a jack within there that you can plug into your headphone. And, or uh, the iPod listening speakers that you can just pop into your ear and hear everything that's being transmitted. <clears throat> there is some issues with working with uh, telequail, um, particularly your ambient noises, um, background noises. Sometimes the sound can be picked up all too well, so maybe you might not want to hear everything that's being said or the opposite can take place. If you have the speaker that's only speaking into the microphone, uh, but there's not enough speakers in the room, uh, particularly if you're hearing aided on a telecoil only mode, you're not going to be able to hear the other people in the room. So that's in the case where the microphone and the telecoil itself will be nice to have on a hearing aid. <clears throat> you also pick up children and noises and people in seats and footsteps, coughing, uh, lots of other sound within the room. You also have uh, reverberation, which is also another issue with trying to listen to uh, microphones on a hearing aid. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, using a telequel can actually cut out all the reverberations of the sound. So as you see, when the speaker is talking, you can get a direct sound as well as the reverberation, which is the sound taken, bouncing across the room all over the place. As you can see, the sound just kind of goes all over the place as the person picks it up in different, different resources in different areas. So the goal here is to try to get that nice green signal. That's your, uh, the person speaking and you, you're listening to a telecoil and picking up that sound. I forgot I had a little more thing. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, kind of a personal hookup at home. Some people like to, if they want to loop their homes, you can definitely do that. Uh, television is probably a popular use where you have the processor sitting on top of your television and then of course the loop goes all the way across around the room and so the sound is being broadcast all around and the person wearing the hearing aid switched to a telecoil is picking up the signal that's going around the room here. So you can, if you're wearing a uh, if you're wearing a hearing aid with both a microphone or if you have the telecoil set up in such a way, you can still hear environmental noises like doorbells or a kid playing, a dog barking, or even your spouse. Um, if you don't lose the sound, if, you, if someone walks in between you and the television, because you're, you're still getting the sound directly from the uh, induction cord, then versus if someone walks across the speaker in, in front of the speaker in your television, you may have a little bit of a disruption. And uh, for most people, that may not be a big issue, but for a hearing aid user, uh, it can be a challenging to try to hear as uh, you're constantly trying to catch up with the type of 
lost of uh, noise you're trying to hear. And of course the telecoil, you can sit anywhere in the room and the TV sound is being customized to your type of hearing loss because of your hearing aids. Oh, I forgot to mention the uh, slide that I, from this point on, that I pulled in is actually from Loop America. Uh, this is the uh, program that uh, is working to create more looping uh, in the public settings, stadiums, uh, theater halls, meeting rooms, um, even uh, we have a project right now working up at the Utah State Capitol trying to get them looping going. Hopefully we can get that on the move. Um, how do you know if a, loop, a room is looped or had the ability to use the telecoil? Um, a lot of times you'll see the, the very common signal, the common graphic of the ear with the line through it. And then notice on the bottom right side, the little T, um, that pretty much tells you that this room is looped and ready for use for telecoil use. So if you don't have a hearing aid or an implant that has the telecoil within, or if you don't wear any, you can go to the customer service booth and ask them for a, uh, a headset that works with this telecoil. So if they have the room looped, they should definitely have the headset available. Some places that you may find these loops, <clears throat> the, uh, the biggest uh, movement now is trying to get them into travel areas such as airports. Um, you know, in uh, England, at the Heathrow Airport, they have uh, loop areas where there's loop so people can hear the announcements uh, using the hearing aids. Grand Rapids, Michigan, they, their airport was recently looped. Um, also, Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport was also, as well as New York Transit System, recently un underwent some installation or undergoing installation of these loop systems. And this is very exciting for a lot of uh, hearing aid users, especially if they have a telecoil within it. Uh, be, out, be able to hear the announcement that have taken place and people can know what is being said through the PA system. Hey Mitch, we have a question. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kim said, do any of you uh, or you know if the loop is being used in a school classroom? Uh, in fact, uh, I don't know which school classroom, but there are uh, some university colleges that are uh, installing them. Um, there is, that's a very good question. I wish I brought the resource list that actually has a, a listing of places that are looped. Um, Can you send that to me? I'd be happy to send it to our... What's that? Send it to me and then send I'll it send it to you. It to okay, me. I will send it to story. Then uh, we can you can give you a good resource of what places have these loopings. But yes, uh, schools are definitely a part of the the uh, this organization here to have looping system built in. Uh, taxi cabs are in New York are installing them. Um, I don't know how much help it would be trying to hear the taxi the taxi driver, but uh, I'm sure it does increase the odds of being, not being able to understand them. And uh, in, in London, they're, they're, they've gone way ahead in getting the taxi cab looped for sound and to help make it more convenient for the people with hearing loss and using telecoils. <clears throat> Some of the other places where you can find looping systems public mass transit, um, London, <clears throat> of course, I, they've, uh, their slide talked a lot about London because they, they've done very well in trying to get these, these places uh, looped for sound for people wearing hearing aids. The ticket windows, the cu customer information points, uh, if you notice on the graphic here, the picture also has the, that little symbol that allows the user to know that there's a telecoil available so they can just flick on their hearing aid and know I think I don't think I can say enough about how helpful this is because you're not having to carry around any extra equipment to be able to hear what is being said. Like all these devices I showed you here on the table, they're all very helpful and useful, um, but how often do we walk around out in public keeping it in our pockets or in our bag to be able to use them? So having the telecoil loop system and it finding the places that have them, uh, you, you, especially like myself using a hearing aid all the time, I'm, I'm never without the telecoil. Other places you may find them. 
stadium and event centers. Uh, recently, Michigan State University looped their stadium. Um, I personally haven't had a chance to go visit it, but I would love to be able to hear what it, what it sounds like to hear the announcers over a roaring crowd. Uh, a few other pop, uh, well-known places like museums and libraries, uh, particularly in New York, the uh, Statue of Liberty had the loop system, so you can hear the tour guide or the announcements that are taking place there. Even the New York Yankees, for example, at their ticket booth have a loop system. The hearing aid users can come up and just click on the hearing aid and hear what the, uh, the booth, the cashier is saying. So these are good examples of how the loop system can be very helpful for people with hearing loss and particularly hearing aid and cochlear implant users. Uh, places of worship, um, more and more places are installing these loop devices. <clears throat> As I showed you that earlier graphic, they loop it around the room or around the pews so they can hear the, uh, the uh, pastor speaking. Large conferences, conference rooms or meeting rooms at places of business um, or convention centers can also be looped. Um, <clears throat> Washington, D.C., I believe they, they've undergone installation of them, themselves. And then uh, an, a final uh, indication of where these loop systems can work. And here we have a pharmacist in New, Me in New Mexico that had the, uh, a uh, little box there that has the telequil symbol on it. Uh, that's actually a pad that uh, allows the whatever sound that's being fed into that to be conduct, uh, conducted through that loop. And so if a person has a hearing loss and comes up to the booth and is struggling to hear, you can just pull out that little pad and the person can switch on the hearing aid and then they can have it carry on a, um, a clear communication because they can understand everything that's being said. And as I mentioned before, there's the, the movement within the United States, the Loop, Loop America um, and the HLLA. They, they've been trying to create a campaign to get uh, <clears throat> more people aware of what's available out there, audiologists and the members of the HLLA, um, on behalf of their, their educational camp campaign, trying to meet uh, more managers of venue centers, uh, event centers, um, I know that here in Utah, there's, we got a little bit of a, a outreach going to trying to find more people involved and in, who are willing to um, work with this organization to have the looping system. So if you know of anybody uh, that would be willing to, to listen to the, the benefits of what these loop system can have for hearing loss, uh, people with hearing loss or hearing aid users, I'll be glad to get in touch with them. or refer them to the uh, website, audiology.org, or we also have two other uh, websites, the loopamerica.com or hearingloss.org, which has more information about these loop systems. And I also give them thanks because some of my, the materials of my presentation are within this, these slides here. Hey Mitch, we have another question. Mm -hmm. uh, Shelley said, how does the T-coil compare to the use of an FM system in schools? Um, the T-coil is, the FM system, a lot of times you can use the FM system, FM system along with the telequail. Uh, your telequail is basically just the carrier of the uh, sound to connect to your hearing aid. Uh, the best way I can give you an analogy of that is the, the wiring you have from your speaker to your amplifier and your, like your stereo system at home. Um, that copper wiring you have, you plug into the back of your amplifier the black and red, and then you put those two wires in, then you stick it in behind the, uh, the speaker. That wire alone, it, it's the same concept as the telecoil within your hearing aid. So if you were to use an FM system, most likely that means you want to hear the speaker, but you want to be able to sit anywhere in the room, but you don't have a loop system in the room. So uh, that's kind of a replacement for a looped room. <coughs> Excuse me. So the FM would be the, your carrier of sound, and then the telecoil would plug directly into the FM system. However, if it does have a looped room, um, like I was showing you here in the slide, if you wanted to compare the FM using a telecoil loop 
versus just the loop all by itself. The a lot of cases, the FM fam, FM is a little bit clearer. Um, and one thing I didn't mention in this in the uh, presentation is the telecoil. You do have the susceptibility of uh, electromagnetic in interference. Um, fluorescent lighting, for example, can cause a little bit of a hum within the hearing aid and telecoils. Um, if you have a lot of um, security systems in, within the building or uh, heavy machinery use, such as refi uh, refrigerators or um, I'm trying to think of other devices that use heavy mach electrical machinery, the hearing aid or the loop can be kind of disrupted by those devices. When you're using the FM system, you kind of bypass all of that. Uh, so there's a lot of pros and cons. Um, so I would say FM is probably a little bit clearer, but they both work very well. Judy had a follow-up question on that. Mm -hmm. She says, uh, could you give a ballpark figure on costs of personal systems for use with an FM? With an FM? Uh, you would be purchasing two different th two different things. The FM itself would probably range from uh, a couple of hundred to a thousand, depending on what you need to get. Um, if it's just a one-on-one, two people itself, the top of the line one would cost you around eight hundred to a thousand. A lower end one, maybe fifty to about three hundred, in that range. Then, of course, the telecoil itself is basically a copper wiring, so that would be a lot cheaper. Uh, you're, you're just looking at about something as simple as the neck loop I was telling you about would be about $30 to $50. Or um, well, if you get a loop system all around the room, um, depending on the size of the room, probably 1000 to twenty or 30000 uh, again, it all depends on the size of the room and how much, how much uh, distance you need to cover. So any other questions that are? Well, I appreciate all the time that I have had to share with you about these telecoil devices. Um, if you ever have any further questions or need more information or resources, this is all my contact information, my phone number, which is actually a voice, text, or whichever mode of communication you want to use, or you also have email as well. Uh, <clears throat> and then we have the video phone up front if you're a video phone user. And I welcome any questions you may have. It's been a, been a wonderful opportunity to share all, all about these telecoil devices. And uh, I wish I could say, say more about how great it is, but I do from my own personal experience, and I, I can't live without it sometimes, especially with the uh, using of telephone. Okay, and we'd like to thank Mitch for taking time to present this to us today. And I'd just like to remind everybody before you get out of AggieCast to take the uh, evaluation. The link is on the left side of the the AggieCast page and please let us know if you have ideas for future trainings. We'd love to accommodate you. Uh, also, this training will be archived after it is closed, captioned, and uh, also DVDs will also be made available uh, and it will be put online on our blog. Uh, I will send an email out about that and you can always check out our other archive trainings on the blog at Utah AT Program at blogspot.com. Again, that's Utah AT program at blogspot.com. And uh, we'd like to thank you for attending, and uh, we appreciate uh, you sticking out. Uh, we know sometimes there's technical difficulties with the WIMBA, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>